You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. We rolling? Yeah, bruh. Are we on here? We're on. Look at this setting. Look at this for a fucking setup. Not a bad setup. Casa del Simpson. Casa del Simpson. Sure, we'll go with that. Well, that would be the House of Simpson or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it would be, Tom, I suppose. You're right. Spanish. Man. Yeah, I mean... South of... I don't know if I feel particularly Spanish today, Tom, but doing a fucking podcast from the couch. Mm. Well, this is given, a throwback to our old days. Well, I was actually thinking to myself, Thomas, we did this this time last year, I think. Boxing Day, I think I ran to your place. Oh, that's right. And we, we probably s- had a couple of techies. We, well, we certainly pounded some Ferrero shares. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Love a row share. Well, I... Yeah. This, you know, you could probably cut and paste certain topics that we talk about from yeah. like, but I am on a health kick. And I went into the office the other day because I had to get some shit. Actually, I was dumping boxes into our recycling bins. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. When, you, when you find yourself recycling bins that you can use and abuse, it'll change your life. Dude, I got in there and all fucking like 12 of them out the front empty as fuck and i'm like oh yeah and i've been i've been offloading boxes to the office for a couple of weeks now yeah well, just having them, moved. well but having them just they've just been sitting there as soon as you open the door i'm like i need to get these things out of the way before we start to get back into there oh you've just been dumping them no in i've been there. dumping them in the office <laughs> like for everything right so i went in there and i was getting into my work filled up a, basically all of the recycling bins out the front with our shit but mm. I went in there and I noticed a box of Ferrero shares. And <laughs> Where'd they come from? The baggy green long oh, lunch. Shout out Liam? to Liam, who was the only one that came bearing gifts. Listen, I don't want to point fingers at the others. However, I will point out a simple fact. Only one person bought gifts. Mm. One person. One and now he bought me Ferrero shares, you curly whirly squirlies. I didn't touch them. Yeah, I would have been fucking. I didn't touch them. Did. I thought about it. I didn't even finish the Ferreros. I went, listen, dude. I hadn't had breakfast, mm. and I pounded a top row of Ferreros. Oh, you had a top row. I had a row, like a, a level. Eight. Yep, I had eight. And <laughs> I went. I need to stop now. Yep. And I went. I looked at the fucking curly whirly squirlies. Don't worry, they're there. Mm. I eyed them off. Mm. But I went. I thought better of it. Curly, squirly, whirly, squirlies are elite. They're good, dude. They're, They're really, really good. good. They're really good. Ferrero, though, I actually, like, I'm not a big hyperbole guy. I'm not a big statement guy. No, no, hyperbole is not your cup it's of not, tea. It's not my cup of tea. But <laughs> they could be the greatest chocolate of all time. i tell you what makes them so um, fundamentally sound, Tom, mm. is that... You can one bite them if you want, or you can two bite them. Yeah, sorry. So you can mouth a whole you one. You can mouth a whole one if you want, or you can double it, or tr- or triple bite, depending on the size of your mouth. Or Listen, if it's, a, if it's a mouth size issue, then I've got absolutely all of the time in the world for you to double bite, triple bite. Yeah. But if you've got just a normal, run-of-the-mill human mouth... <laughs> Well, listen. And your and your triple bite and double bite, yeah, they're made to be eaten whole. Listen, all I'm opinion. all I'm saying is they'll stay together, such that you can triple bite if yes. you've got a jaw issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. So, so I think I think that um, they're inclusive. They're an inclusive. No, they are chocolate. That's they are very inclusive. They also, I think, given the the common man generally or speaking, woman. or woman. I would say generally is, is, is a sort of just a, an everyman, right? All woman. All woman. <laughs> Who doesn't necessarily have all the fineries of life. But a Ferrero Rocher, Tom, whilst it's achievable and it's within grasp for all, it'll, it'll bring you up a couple of levels. Yeah, okay. So like a Ferrero Rocher is like being able to look behind the curtain of like business first class. So <laughs> yes. Like yes. Life's, yes. Life's finer things. Yeah. It's essentially turning left in the chocolate In the department. chocolate aisle. Yeah. In the chocolate aeroplane. But you're not paying left prices. You're paying maybe slightly left prices. But you're not, get, you're not, you're not getting buried. You're not getting absolutely... You're not getting your eyes ripped out. Rip, rinsed. No. Gouged. Gouged. I think it's sort of like it's a taste of the finer, lo- finer things in life. Yeah, here we go. I'm a celebrity for a second. <laughs> yeah. Five minutes of fame. Five minutes of Brad Pitt's life. Yeah. Exactly, because Brad Pitt would eat for for, for Eros. Well, I just well when he's not cutting weight, you know, for a film. 
Mate, as if he doesn't fucking go in and out. Well, he's not know. cut all year round. No, he's not cut all year round. I I like to imagine him being cut all year round, though. I don't think he would be. No. I don't think It'd he would be. It'd be a hard life to maintain. So given all those things, it's hard to argue against the Ferrero being best in class. Mm. And it takes you in a bit of a, of a journey with the... the uh, oh, Starkey threatening a man cad there. Good. Keep him honest. Keep him honest. Listen, I don't want to see a Boxing Day cad. I don't want to see... No, no, no. He's, you're not, he's not going to cad him. Cricket brought to you by KO, by the way. Of course. He's just saying, I could cad you. Wow. He wasn't even that far out, to be fair. Mm. De brain, De brain fart, if you ask me. Come Care- on, mate. Careful, De brain. Come on, mate. Yeah, and see, look what he's done. De Bruyne's in now, all the way in. Oh! De Bruyne's all the way in. No, yeah, De Bruyne's... He, De, De Bruyne didn't move out of his crease then. The other thing I like about the Ferrero, Tom, is you're, you're immediately put in a, oh, this is like a special occasion sort of mood. Now, it may not be. No, it but may, it's certainly... It may be you going to the office to throw out cardboard boxes... You've had a fucking row. It put a nice little, it, like a like a, a nice filter over the whole. It morning. filters it. Yeah, exactly right. We're we're reviewing this as well here. Starkey's ball, just so everyone knows. Cricket brought to you by KO Tonka. Be very careful of where you sh- no. You just stay over there, buddy. You stay right over there, you big thing. You stay over there. Be strong. Stay over there, mate. Oh, that's out. That's hit him on the tootsie. I think that's what hit him on the tootsie. Yeah. yeah. Tonka, oi. Oop. On I the think that's tootsie work, dude. You reckon that's the torch? I think that's torch first, and it was. It looked plump, like it looked in line. Torch first. Is that is that right on the torch? Oh, that's torch. Oh, dude. right on the torch. I think that's torch first, bat second. I think I see torch. Torch there. Torch then bat. Torch on the way up. Yeah, torch oh. first, dude. It's torch. Look at that. There, torch. 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 Yeah, that's the torch. Torch. Uh, Yep, there. Yeah, there. There we are. There, there, Thank there. you. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> Tonka. Christ. What a... Tonka. <laughs> now Eddie's just got a package delivered. We give that out, ladies and gentlemen. That's Toots first. What are we talking about here? What are we reviewing here? What are we looking at? It's so clearly toots for... There. That's a toots. There. There. There, yeah. Well, he's, he's found it. Well, fuck. They found the frame. I hope so, because we found it. Tom, I've often thought that you and I could play a role... In the... In the, in, in, in the reviewing. Of, yeah, look, they've gone on in line... See you later. <laughs> Plum, piss off, you're out. You could argue that Stark attempting the man cat just unsettled things out in the middle. Yep. Wigged everyone a bit. Now, is that DeBrain as well? DeBrain. No, no, it was Erwig. No, Erwig. But I'm saying at the other end is Erwig going, oh, what's going on here? Yeah. What's... Just take your mind off the task. Yeah. Unsettle things. No, change was... the rhythm. Yeah, that was I think that's done. absolutely eyes up from Mitch Stark there. That's some really good shit. Absolutely eyes up. Saf is a fucked cricket brought to you by our good friends at KO. Well, our dear friends at KO, Tom. Yep. Our dear, dear friends at KO. So that's Ferrero Rocher's, yeah, Tom. For the, probably the 12th time in our in our young history. Sure. However, I see a world in which we revisit this topic many, oh, many no, more times. no, no, yeah. I don't, I don't think that's the last time we talk Ferrero Rocher's. Certainly not. And I'd be disappointed if it was. Mm. If you were to sit here right now and say, listen, we won't talk about it ever again. Well, I feel like it'd be sad. It'd be confusing. Because mm. then I'd start to think to myself, does that mean that we'd stop doing the podcast? Because I can't imagine a world in which we don't talk for Yeah, That's you know? a fair point. Now, I wanted to. I started talking about this before, but I realised we were about to record, and as you and I have made abundantly clear, we will, we will mine the depths of our friendship for content, and so we chose to not talk to each other, essentially. Essentially. While which we is- set up. It's basically what it's become. Yeah. Um, but Tom and I won't talk to each other before a podcast, <laughs> even the days leading up to it, generally. Um, and then once it's done, don't really feel a need to say another word to each <laughs> other. So, what else is left to say? 
Not much. I, last night, yes, dad's on a health kick. I'm 100 kilos. I'm letting everyone know. Dad, I've put on, I've, I lost 15, 14, 15. I've now put on 10. Not ideal. It is what it is. But I'm now heading back down. Dad's making the trip back down to fucking 90s, Phil. 89? What's your number? I look 90, 90 at least, but I actually think I could definitely, like I could comfortably get into the 80s and not look like You should that. birth year it. 89. Yeah, but like, and not look emaciated, you know what I mean? Like, I've got enough to You lose. wouldn't look emaciated at 89, I'm sorry. That's what, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> Um, emaciated <laughs> Yeah I've got like 40 kilos Before I looked like Fucking emaciated But I went to get Some prawns last night Now I don't know If prawns are healthy I don't know If they're good for you I don't know If it's like a You know A lean meat As it were I I think it would Have to be lean That's what I would have thought But I got a kilo Of them last night And I didn't eat all day And so I was going to Just pound some prawns For dinner As it turned out I had some of the girls Veal schnitz um, which were nice But a kilo of prawns I was saying It's a kilo of prawns On the scale Not a kilo in the gullet And I Like how What do you What do you reckon The difference is Like how many Grams of Extra shit Is there in a prawn Well look Look it's It's an interesting point You make Tom Kilo on the scales Not A kilo in the gullet Off vibe Tom and I'm and I'm I'm making the assumption here that you're removing the head, the legs, the ass, the scale, the, 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 the scaly skin. bits, yeah. and maybe the poo. Yeah, I I personally don't care about removing the poo, but I do them because Listen, Steph it's, wants it's, poo removed. It's probably not going to make a huge difference to the weight. No, no, no it'd be negligible. At the it'd be stage. negligible. Um, maybe a gram here or there in 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 total. Yeah. When yeah. it's all said and yeah, done, yeah, from a kilo of prawns. That's right. I think, Tom, that you are probably looking at somewhere in the vicinity of 350-ish grams. That's what I'm thinking. I would have thought. Yeah. Which is quite a shaving. It's quite a, it's quite a difference. It's a significant amount. So then I'm, I'm probably only... Well, then I'm, I'm consuming 650 grams of prawns. No, I think you'd be consuming 350. You're saying that only of the... If I've got 1,000... A thousand grams. A, a thousand kilo, grams. Right? Yeah. So a thousand grams of prawns. Yep. We then d head, d shell, yep. d all of that. Yep. You're saying that you think that, that all of that is six hundred and fifty grams. I reckon. So I'm only getting three hundred grams. I tell of you why, because no, the head is no. so big. It is big. It takes off like it, it unless you got a huge prawn, like a, a big fucker. That head's taken up most of the fucking. But is it as dense as the body? Of the prawn itself, the flesh, and that's uh, you know and maybe it is. It's the a big head, head. Well, the tail's not. That's no. For sure. The tail's the head. I think the head would be. There's there's shit in there. They're not hollow. No, they're not. You can eat them. Have done. People yeah. eat them. Yeah, no, I've I've, I've eaten some people. Prawns. I've seen people just fucking rip straight in. I don't think you want a mouth body and the all head, but no. Nah, see, that's huge. That's a fucking massive. And then I ask myself that. two questions: Do you enjoy that? Or do you not know how to peel them? If you just eat the head. If you no, if you just eat it. Oh no, you don't know how to peel them, <laughs> or you just don't care for for them. Because like I, I hate peeling them, but it has to be done. But I see, I I don't love peeling them, but I also do like the sort of it's sort of like going to, to to a for, for a hard day's yakka you're earning, and at the end of the day you get a nice cold beer yeah you're earning your prawns you're earning your prawns i look i'm down for earning your prawns my thing's more about the like just having dirty fuck like shit like seafoody hands i don't like having seafoody hands how do you how do you approach it then do you i rip the head first no 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 i i, I understand i've seen you peel i'm oh, talking more about i'm talking more about will you peel 10 then wash the hands and then eat them, or will you go one at a time no, and then night, and then wash at the end? Last or? night I peeled half. Yep. Washed the hands. Do you wash with a with a little thing of water? Or do you go to the bathroom? I and was wash? standing at the sink peeling these. Right. Sinks. Okay. Because also I know they stink. I don't know what stink they smell like. I don't get it, but I know they do. So I've got to be like, I've got to be conscious of that. Well, they smell fishy. I don't. Know. Whatever. S yeah. So I stand at the sink and I rip them open into a plastic bag. And then I put them into a bowl once they're peeled. Yes. Then I do that for the amount of time I see deem fit. 
mm-hmm. I then will, if I've depooed them, I will then rinse them because you don't get the poo all out. You got to rinse. Well, them. well. Sometimes you just maybe some, sometimes you spread and poo all over. Sometimes them. I think more often than not you'll fucking get the job done, but you're not going to nail all of them. No, so you just rinse them all, then you get your work. Now, and some like some guys are backed up. Oh, there's some fucking. Some guys are backed. There are up. some. There are some prawns in there that haven't shit for months. Months, bro. I'm like, you died constipated. Is that all poo, or are we looking at a spinal cavity at some point here? Like, I I don't know the anatomy of a prawn, Tom. I, I, I don't know that shockingly. <laughs> but oh, fuck, Tom. God. But I like to what think, Tom. Fucking put on me. <laughs> Slobber. <laughs> yeah. I like to think I know poo when I'm looking at it. 31 years on this planet has has steadied me, has steeled me. Yeah, for being able to call a poo a poo. Yeah. You know, poo's got a certain way of, yeah. of, of being. And I think that's 100% poo. And I think given that some blokes are backed up... Dude, have you ever speaks, seen... It speaks to poo because you go, of all the prawns in the ocean, some of them must be constipated okay, at but, death. Okay, then... Not per capita, per, I guess, pound for pound. <laughs> does the prawn carry the most poo on board of any living animal? Because, like, you can have a big shit. You don't have one that runs the full <laughs> length of your body. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's the biggest no, shit I've ever don't. seen. No, you don't. Some blokes have got a, a shit from, from toe to s- skull, essentially. Well, that's what you'd have to do. That's what would be required to even hold a candle to so the So you're corn. probably, so I mean, so the pound for pound, you're talking about a, a six foot poo. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Imagine Yao Ming taking a dump if he was pooing as a prawn poo. Yeah, it was seven foot. Well, you need a drop hole for that sort of yeah. work. And if he's backed up. Now we're in some real but trouble. But now we're in trouble. Well, now we're he's in, big in trouble. trouble. We're not in trouble. He's in trouble. Well, he's drowning in he his own feces. Yeah. How'd he die? He Jeez, poo. that's interesting. Mm. You're dead right though, Tom. And some blokes are cough. Dude, I poo regularly, right? So I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I'm but good. I know of people that don't. And like when I say I, don't, I, I'm like, don't, don't. Well, I know of people that don't. I know of people that can go a week. Mm, yeah. A week is a long time in the poo game, dude. And like... Especially when, you, when, you, when you're when you on one, two a day. Just go, maybe three. Well, you're, you're not know. ruling three out. I'm not ruling three out. I'll sometimes do two before fucking lunch. But if you aren't... Doing if you're like a week without it, I don't. That does a lot to just your mental. Like you, you that's inside you. You got put. Oh, Starkey with fucking nine fingers. That'll put a lot of like that'll. I that makes you feel quite unwell. It's stressful. It's stressful, and it's like, where's it's? You keep eating. Well, it becomes. You keep eating, Eddie, it be, but it's not coming out. It becomes all encompassing, and uh, I recall a story when I was in Bali. I'm, I'm sure my brother. Shout out to him. Shout he got out engaged. To him. He the got girl. engaged. Congratulations. I'm sure he won't mind me telling this story. Yeah, that's right. Shout out to you, Tails. Um, we went to Bali once and he, he became so constipated he stopped speaking. So, and that How was old? like, oh, I was probably four years ago. Oh, bro, that's okay. If you're an adult and you have to like take a almost like a vow of silence. <laughs> but I'm all, so all I'm doing, I'm just, I'm, I'm merely pointing out that it, it can become. Well, it can rob you of your speech. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it your, can. Your fucking your 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 faculties start to <laughs> shut down. They do. Your speech is the first thing to go, and you hundred percent. It's the first thing that goes. It's the first thing that goes, and I'll give you the hot tip. Based on that, on that alone, there's a lot of mute prawns out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, some people wonder why prawns don't speak more. It's because they're backed up. It's because they need to shit. They're constipated. <laughs> That's all it is. The evidence? Well, peel a prawn. Yeah, peel a prawn and you'll know. <laughs> and you'll know. Peel the, peel the back off a prawn and you'll be like, oh, this thing, no wonder it's fucking never said a word in its life. <laughs> they can actually speak. They can. They are, after maybe the dolphin and the killer whale, the mm. smi- oh, and the octopus, smartest animal in mm. the ocean. Beautiful voice, Tom. Wonderful Be- voice. Siren song. Beautiful. You, you hear a prawn in full voice. <laughs> Oh, it'll take your breath away. Harder. It will bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> but the irony, the cruel irony is that such as their battle with constipation, 
they can't speak. They can't. Well, they've been robbed of, been of robbed their song, of, of, their, of song, of their voice, which is actually, in in some ways, robbing the world of, of beautiful voices. Yeah. Mm. Um, so back to the prawn itself. You, you've got through half. You pound the other half. You clean up. You go home. Is that it? Tell you what, you know, what else you do, and I, I feel like maybe I'd heard this before, but I saw it at Christmas. Um, you put all of them into a bag, tie it up, and then put it in the freezer. Yes, you do until garbage day. That's you, yes, you do if you're polite. Yeah, and by polite I mean it depends where your bins are. Like they'll start stinking up something fucking shocking. Yeah, if you put them in, especially in the hot Australian sun, punters and dribbles, which is which has been we... getting into its work. Not I, today in Sydney. No, but... today in Sydney it's a bit overcast. But I actually wanted to mention this, and I don't want to early crow, but I'm going to. Oh, this will... don't Dude, don't ruin Christmas. No, I'm a, well, Christmas is over, so I can't. Yeah, but I'm metaphorically, early, I'm early crowing right now. You know what? Sydney test is coming up. I'm not early crowing. I'm going to stop. Because I know what you're going to say. Yeah, and I'm just... And I, think, and I think that after six years of doing this, you and I should be more aware of our power. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not... No, I'm not going to early crow it until after the Sydney test. Because that's... That, it's important that that well, goes Well, it's... Well, you and I have got a bit on. We've got a bit on. It's important that that goes ahead. It is very important, both spiritually, emotionally, and financially. Commercially. Commercially. <laughs> that it goes ahead. Uh, particularly day one. <laughs> Yeah. I don't well, care for the other days. Well, I do. Well, I do. But not commercial. Not commercial. <laughs> Commercially, day one. Yeah. Must go ahead. Must happen. <laughs> must. <laughs> so there will be no early crowing here, No, Thomas. no, no. I wooed it up yeah. purely for the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Which in my head have already been spent. So, yeah. <laughs> so we, we, yeah, I've already spent commercially. The f- day ones, you know, uh... Gatekeeping? Gatekeeping, crackling. Crackling, yeah. So we'll just woo up there. Yeah, we'll woo up. Um, it was fucking hot yesterday in Sydney. So if you are disposing of your prawns, be a gentleman. Or woman. <laughs> <laughs> or gentlewoman. Yeah. And put them in the freezer and Mental fucking bin them on. Day. And listen, if you do find that you are running out of room in the freezer... Take them down the park and get rid of them there. No, dude, there are plenty of bins you can you can you can make it someone else's problem. You can quick sticks. Oh, and the the easiest problem to make it is the councils. Yeah, That's I what would like to think. What are you paying think, your rates for? Well, exactly right. I'd like to think that those bins are oft emptied, Tom. Boland. Boland. Scotty, Scotty Boland. B at the G. Now a smudge taking a fucking screamer here. The Look, boys are around him, like yeah. suggesting he may have. Yeah, I was trying to work out what the reaction was. It wasn't a screamer, but it was a great catch. What well, does he? Does he get down to it? Nah, I think it was up. Well, I wasn't watching. Cricket brought to you by our good friends at KO. Up. Oh. 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 oh Who's that, Marnus? So Marnus is in trouble because he's nearly fucked it. Oh, Jesus. that's the reaction. Marnus. That's the reaction. That could that was Marnus getting in the way there was so unnecessary, but oh, and it's to brain as well. He's just a kid starting to you know. Marnus just t- <coughs> just just absolutely enthusiastic. Yeah, he is. Was I um, I did appreciate the commentators, particularly Mister Cricket, trying to motivate the punter and the dribbler, tease them, if you will, about the possibility of of South Africa digging in. And making a test of this. That, to me, sounds like a Look, producer in his ear going, hey, this thing's going to become an absolute hu- a rugby league humping. Yeah. And we need you to keep the fucking people entertained. So just let them know there is a world where Safka saved this test. Yeah, exactly. Because he, he was talking about breaking it down into 10 to 15 minute or 10 to 15 run increments. Right. Which, sure, he's like, and then if you chip away enough of them, you'll, you'll be surprised at how quickly you, how you, quickly you start to take hold of the, of the bigger picture. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, but what he's also talking about is something that's, I'm pretty sure, statistically never been done. Yes. So, you know, behind, I think at the start of play, when he was making his speech, so to speak, 369 behind. Yeah. Something in that vicinity behind the first innings score of Australia. So... 
I appreciated Mr. Cricket uh, trying to boy the boys, but I think South Africa. Well, I think maybe I, I, I caught a bit of it. I thought he was sort of pushing a bit of multiverse theory, where it's like there is a there, there, is, there a is, universe. is a universe where they come back and win it. Is that our universe? Yes. Well, on that theory, Tom, there is a world in which just for fun. South Africa come back here, set a score, and then we, we win by, by like a run it. on the final ball. Yeah. There is a world There's where a this world is where the most happens. exciting test of all time. And so, like, we can't rule that out as being a possibility. Don't you fucking snore at me, Tonka. <laughs> well, he wants your attention, mate. Well. <coughs> so, look, I mean, and I appreciate Mr. Cricket, you know, bringing in a bit of the multiverse theory into his cricket commentary because sometimes, you know, you need to spice it up. Well, that's right. And when when viewed through that lens, Thomas, Mr. Cricket actually spot on. Is he an astrophysicist? Well, I think he's... I've always seen him as sort of uh, ethereal in many ways, Mm. sort of exists across planes and dimensions and multiverses, Tom. Yeah. He's, uh, He's a nice voice to have around... I tell you who's another a voice that I, like a a voice that I thoroughly enjoy in the commentary box. Um Isha? Well no, Isha is fucking Isha's got the nicest voice I've ever heard of all time. But Mark War June is just the grouchiest cunt in the world. June like, is grouchy. He's so good though. Like he's obviously a good commentator, but he's like his his sort of like backhanded compliments or like his comments about like I'm pretty sure he made a comment about fucking Warner when he was on like a hundred ninety six or something like about just generally like about his batting and how it hadn't been that good or something like that. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> but just these little side comments where you're like, Okay, mate <laughs> Or like when they were talking about um they brought up something though about him in a, a test with Warney. Mm-hmm. And he's like, st- or they were talking about how like uh, Warner was going past him on 8,000 test runs. Yep. Then I think maybe about like the test when he got 8,000 test runs or something like that. And just This him, is Junior. Yeah, this is yeah. Junior. But then Junior having a like, not even in a tongue in cheek way, he, he mentions how he got, man, he thinks he got man of the match in that test. <laughs> Oh, God. Maybe it was when Warney took a fuckload of wickets, but he still got man of the match. And it was on, he's just, there's something about him that I love to listen to because he's like this really competitive, yes, yes. grumpy former cricketer. Yeah, who, who feels the need to remind the nation of his own exploits. Yes. I wonder if part of that comes from having to live in a shadow to some degree. Yeah, it's funny, right? Because he does, he's obviously Steve War's brother. But he's also he was fucking amazing. He was he was elite. He was like just top not, ten, he's like in the top ten list for yeah, runs and yeah, shit yeah, of the nation. Yeah, like yeah. just not quite as good as his brother, who was close to the greatest we ever had. Probably third. Third, yeah. It's actually it's interesting. Um, shout out to this is not technically an ad, even though we do talk cricket for our good friends at KO. But I caught myself as I peeled prawns last night, um, watching the Alan Border doco like series they've got on mm. um ab could bat he could bat that but like but ab was one of those ones where he retired or he was like he was i think he might have retired like before i was born or maybe just after i was born so i never got to fully bathe in ab right mm. And this drown yourself, drown in yourself in our in ab because he's always like at least well, it, the fucking alan border medal but you know in what I mean? my mind like a fucking captain's captain. Yes, but also I don't have a reference point because I never saw him play. So even though I know, like you're telling me he's good and I believe you. Are you, are you saying you wish you would, you wish you would have lived in? What I'm saying is the documentary allowed for me to sort of get a bit more of an idea about AB because sure. they showed a lot of like footage of old tests mm. and different things and like uh, you know uh, people t- talking about him. It was just a, it was it's a nice way for me to appreciate AB. It also made me think, Eddie. I'm going to watch that. Yeah, you, sh- you should watch it. I encourage you to watch it. It's good. Not an ad, but an ad. Well, it's not an ad. No, it's not an ad, but it's an ad. But it's well, it's a, recommendation it's a recommendation that happens to be on the platform of our good friends at Kurt. Yes, which is an ad. 
That was an ad. That was an ad. Um, I wonder whether, as Test cricket, and I'll well, I'll come back to this in a second, but just the conversations around Test cricket's death, slow death, but quickening death. I yes, yes I the, the the grade cricketer boys have. Well, they have alarmed me. But even fucking on the ABC, the ABC, they were talking about it yesterday, and this guy was like, this guy was going, I can't remember who it is, but he was an English guy, bit snooty as the English can be. Ooh, yes. Um, but they were going fart sniffery. They were like, the first time that there was ever anything raised about the problem with Test cricket was back in 1910, and there's been all these different examples of like Test cricket being in trouble uh, throughout the uh, preceding D- decades. century. He was like, this is the first time I'm genuinely worried about it. And like it being genuinely a concern about where it's going. Most test catchers for Australia, Ponting, War, Taylor, Mark War, that is, Taylor, Border, Smudge. He is a long way behind. But look at Ponting, 168 from 196. For reference, puns and dribblers, Smith's 91 from 150. 50. That's insanity. That is insane. Ricky ain't getting bested. No. Ever. No, he's not. Um, but whether, let's say Test Cricket died or got to a point where it was much like few and far between. Well. It was just the big three. Whatever. Just just go with me here. Yeah. The, the big three won't go. And for, and for those playing along at home or living under a, a rock, metaphorical or otherwise, that would be England, Australia, or India. Yeah. The Ashes isn't going anywhere. We know that as a fact. But they were saying, will the Ashes mean as much? If it's just like if there's only the only other cricketing option is music is uh, India, right? Isn't like so the only other tests you play is against India. Does the Ashes mean as much? Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I it well I you're talking about predicting the future here. It's hard to fucking make a call. Well, it's a question. I think I think in the immediate it will still matter 100. percent How that how it's affected in like a hundred years say for sure like. Well, it's like the thing. Yeah, if, then, if then, but if no one else concern. is playing tests, fucking the best players are probably not going to be incentivized to play tests. There's like, who the fuck knows? But well, the best players in the world will be T twenty players. T twenty players. That's it, because they're not going to be practicing any test cricket, which means that test cricket won't be as good a product, and that it won't go for five days because they all fucking suck. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not like it's not like um, you know where you go state of origin where you can go. Oh, we just play three games a year because it's like yeah, you're playing the exact same game, so it's not. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you're playing the exact same game, so the quality will continue, and you actually it'll, it'll improve. Sure, but this is a completely different fucking format to your T20, which like I'm not anti T20, but I just for the life of me cannot understand how it would be someone's preferred format. It's got to be. Like sure. an attention thing, you know? Yeah. It's got to be an attention thing. People don't want to fucking... Like, I think part of the love of Test Cricket, at least as an Australian, is born out of the time of year we get to enjoy it here, which is when there's nothing to do. Well, that's where we sit right now. We're in fucking serious no man's land. It's horizontal season. Yeah, it's, we're in the we're in the middle of horizontal season. We're in the right middle now. of horizontal season, smack bang in the middle of it. We, it's the sort of time of year when you don't know what fucking day it is. Well, I only know what day it is because we're doing the podcast. Evie asked me this morning, "What day is it?" And I said, "I don't know." She goes, "Is it Friday?" I go, "I couldn't fucking tell you, doll." So, because of that, and because Test cricket, generally speaking, on at this time of year for us, it's so easy to just flop and watch. Flop. Flop, drop, and watch. Flop, drop, and watch. Or drop, flop, and watch, really. Drop, flop, and watch is probably more accurate, Tom. And so I don't give a fuck that it goes for six hours. In fact, I love that it goes for six hours every day, five days, four, four five days. tests. Yeah. But in this, like, TikTok generation, generation fucking entertain me now, mm. I can see how they're more lured in by the bright, flashy fucking zinger bale lights. Of I wonder T20. if it's generation distract me now. Or sorry, entertain me now. I think it's more generation distract me. Yes. Now. I just need to be distracted from, you know, my mind wandering into anything that resembles some sort of self awareness or, you know, yeah, well, self evaluation. My brain's being conditioned so that I need like micro hits of dopamine. Yeah. Which I can only get from quick videos or 
engagement from followers. Yes. And once I get that, I'm okay. So I need to be wowed and I need to be wowed right now. Yeah. Because test cricket as a human creation is the most incredible fucking contest ever conceived. Yes. Like it is. No, no, comfortably. Comfortably. It's not even close. The battle between bat and ball, Tom, the pitch deteriorates, the ball deteriorates, and then it becomes new again. The condition, the physical condition. I mean, look at David Warner, who basically was getting full-blown worked into the ground by the masseuses. Yes. On field. He looked half dead. Well, he was half dead. degrees. Out uh, in the middle, they're saying, Tom. 200 glorious Australian runs. Yeah, just toiling. And then goes the big the big leap. And which may be for a, a sponsor. Well, not a sponsor. No, for a look, brand that I like, don't care to mention. Well, right unless they're throwing Utes. Well, they well they haven't. No, they haven't. I um and then and then cramp so badly has to be helped from the field. Mm. Brave by us. Brave, brave, brave. You don't get that. No. In T Twenty cricket, no, it doesn't don't. allow for it. It doesn't allow for Herculean mammoth efforts. No, it doesn't. It doesn't allow for bravery. No, it. There is no world. There are no parameters in which T20 cricket allows bravery. for bravery. No. For Maybe if you're injured and you bat, but <laughs> yeah, like, but you know. Like, okay, you, st- you you were out there for fucking 15 minutes and you yeah. scored five runs. I don't care no. about that. No. Like, I do. I do, but I, I don't I, as much I, but, as test cricket. Well, I do care, but I don't, I, I, don't, I don't sit there and admire you and go, geez, that's a hero. You're not, it's, you're not a hero. You're not a hero. Hero, the, you are robbing, T20 robs cricket of, hero, of heroes. Of heroic acts. Now, you might say to me, oh, but he scored fucking 30 runs off 10 balls to win it. That's, imp- that's fucking impressive. It's impressive. I'm like, oh my God, get that fucking man a bloke. But yeah. it's not heroic. heroic. It's just not. No. Because to be a hero, you need the conditions... Mother Earth itself to be against you as well. You need Mother Earth to be turning on you. Yes. Because when Mother turns on you, you're in for the fucking fight of your life then. Yeah. Because she doesn't fuck around. No, she doesn't. She's trying to send you to your room. That's right. you got to fucking... you got to fight back. you got to fight back. And that's what we saw at a day with the other day. A brave, brave, brave Dude, that's that became a double. That's the... That's close to one of the bravest I've ever seen. Only the second man in the history of the game, Tom, to score 200 runs in his 100th test. Which is great, but nothing compares to you, to the pressure side of it for me. Pressure on Dave, he hasn't scored a fucking international, he hasn't scored a ton, test ton in three years or something. He was fucked. He got he got bowled first ball by Rabada in the last test. He's just looked like all at sea. Then Uz, then Usman fucking faces the first ball in the second innings. Read into that what you will. What you will. It was then just, he gets, then know. I found I think he got three runs. Hadn't scored a ton since January third, two thousand and twenty. Yeah. So the kid was up against it. Up. Uh, Against it, dude. And I am under the impression that he is looking to tour India and then England this year. So the kid needed runs. Well, he needed runs. He, uh, he, he now, it would seem, it's like where where currently it was like maybe he gets dropped or he's under pressure. Now it's like you probably just retire whenever you want. Like It's on your terms after that 200. But it's still coming Do you close. think it was on his terms anyway? Not after, not when you go into India in the Ashes. If he kept going, like in India, he probably would have been given more chances. And then if he just kept getting fucking nothing in India, where he's historically not thrived anyway, mm. like they'd be. I think they would have started the drums. They'd be beaten. <laughs> Once the media starts to get onto you, yeah, and and it's it's hard to ignore a beaten drum. Yeah, <sighs> bra can fucking really take up a lot of the oxygen in a room. A drum just beaten. But I'm happy. Dave's a friend of ours. Dave's like a really Dave's close a, personal well, Dave, friend. Dave's a dear, close personal friend. Obviously, well, I hope you enjoy the flowers we sent down, bro. Yeah. Um, 
He has invited was, us to his house, but I don't know how serious that was, but he did do it. Well, he did say that we were, he was going to have us over to his man cave. man cave downstairs and we were going to rip and tear. His words, not ours. But is that the greatest? That's, I mean, it's the best probably that I can remember from him in terms of all the odds against him and shit. But like, that's one of the best fucking double hundreds I've ever seen. It was a fucking great knock. Fuck, it was good. Hot as fuck. Bowler's going after him. He Dude, just but also like the, the South African attack. Yeah. He said it's the quickest he's ever faced. Oh, we love that. Yeah. We love like, that. Like, it's not like you're against the West Indies, no disrespect. No disrespect. Mate, the, mate, the South Africa's fucking bowling attack is elite. They can't bat. They can't bat to save their fucking lives. They can't bat to save their lives, but, but they, they can, can bowl. Fucking hope they can bowl. He was in such a mood mm. when he came out, what, late day one. And just fucking started. Look at the lab here running us through the pitch with the Mr. Cricket. Look at that. That is technology. Sorry for you guys at home that can't see it. If you're not watching Fox Cricket, then we can't help you. Huss just taken us through the entire length of the pitch. And it's, it looks to be, look at that. That is unbelievable. That's good stuff, dude. That looks unbelievable as well. How good did that look? Yeah, that looked really cool. So, David Warner against a fucking elite bowling attack comes out and just started working on day one. Yeah. Working. Humping, pumping, dumping. And and really fucking turning me on, if I'm being honest. Mm. But the look of determination when he gets to 50 is like, bro, we're not done here. 100. We're not done here. No. 150. We ain't done here, bruh. 200. That is fucked. Only the second Australian, Tom, some more statistics, to have scored a ton in his 100th test behind the great Ricky Ponting, who went ton, ton. And he's the only man to go ton, ton in a ton test. That's right. So David's 200, only the second guy behind, I believe, Joe Root. Yes, but Joe Root probably wasn't under any pressure. But Joe Root's no a scared. Joe Root, well, Joe Root's a scared little boy. We know this. Mm. Uh, kid can bat though. Kid can bat, but he's terrified. But he's terrified of everything. He's scared of his own shadow. Mm. So that I think means something. It counts. It doesn't count for nothing. No, it doesn't mean nothing. Tom. No, it means something. David, if I'm looking at that list, I'm like, yeah, but you're a man and you scored 200 in your hundredth, so that means more. Yes. Significantly, more. he also retired hurt and came back and got bowled first ball um, because his work was done. Because his work was done, Tom. Mm. He'd done the fucking hard yards. He'd put in the heroic effort. He'd 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 become a giant of the game in that very moment. Something you can't do in T Twenty cricket. Now we move down the uh, the order. Smudge. Well, he ran out Marnus, Dave. But Marnus, I respect Marnus. Did you see that? Where Marnus basically went, this yeah. is your 100th test. I'm yeah, yeah. well, he knows the fucking the he, order of things. He fell on his sword. He knows the order of things, Tom. I respected the shit out of that. He knows the law of the jungle. Yes. But then Smudge in. Smudge gets a brave 85, a bucks ton. That was 100 that went begging, though, for Smudge. Or, but with Smudge, did you read that he'd been sick in the later? Yeah, he'd been sick. So it's basically his flu game. His flu game, yeah. But a hundred in a flu game would have been better. It would have been nice. That's what I would have wanted. Yeah, I would. I'm have actually that prepared too. to get him sick again down the track and give him another shot at having a flu game. Yes, because I, I I think you're only remembered for a flu game if you like dominate. Dominate. Like, That's Dave. If Dave had the flu, <laughs> if Dave had the flu, that'd go down as probably the greatest knock of all time. Yeah. And oh, I'm not one for hyperbole. Tom. No, we're not. That's not what we do. So, Smudge, fucking oath cunt. Can I talk about uh, a wicket keeper bloke, a gloveman in our side? Yep. Before we get to him, though, just if we're going okay, sequentially, you go I just do want to touch on Travis Head, who, just another brave 50, he just turns up. He does turn the up. The kid just turns up. The kid turns up, Tom, and that's why you and I are... Starting to have feelings, mm. thoughts. I'm prepared to acknowledge that I have feelings now for Travis. Oh, I have feelings, but I also have, you know, I have sort of energies coming through to me that suggesting that maybe Travis starts to fucking bark the song next. We'll see what happens there. Yeah. But, but I think that if you are to take over that Man, pre prestigious honour, Tom, you need to be able to. You need to know that travel turn up day in day out, and that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, 
I'm seeing a kid turning the fuck What's up. What's his test average right now? Day in, day out. What's Travis Head's test It'd average? have to be healthy, Tom. It would be... Could I guess? Yeah, you can. I think Travis averages in the high 40s. Give me a number. 48.43. No, but... Oh, nice. 44.6. But that's, mate, 44.6 is delightful. And I would think on the rise. Yeah, dude. it's you No, know, that's gone up. I think he used to, I think it was 40. Are we reviewing this one? Nah. Geez. 44 is rock solid. Dude, 44 is great. That is great. That's a great fucking test average. Love that. That is, here's a stat for you that'll fucking give you an indi- just a little insight into how shit South Africa are. Alex Carey has a higher batting average than the entire South African side bar Dean Elgar. And it's only by like two runs. Mate, they keep flashing these losers up on the screen. Some blokes have got averages of 17 and yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. They're in the top six. I'm yeah. like, who the fuck are these They're calling nuffies? them like the worst batting side for South Africa ever. Who are these again, nuffies? Lends itself to test cricket dying in that country. Now, we get to the fucking Gloveman. Yeah. Alex Carey. He has been fucking sensational. Well... I just am stoked for the young man, the young handsome man getting his first ton. There was some numbers running around about like his what he's done in the last year. Very impressive. Oh, really? Yes. Very That's impressive. That's the other thing I wanted to check while we were still sucking off Trav. I think Trav's made his way into the top 10 test batsmen. In the world? Yeah. Check it That's all right. You check that cam. Top 10 test batters. We're good. We're good. Here it is. Manus, number one. Bubba Azam, number two. Smudge, number three. Trav, number four. Wow. Usman Khawaja, ten. So the boys are hot. Dude, we're flying. We're absolutely flying. And then I wonder what bowling is. Cummins, one. Star could be fucking... He'd be in there, wouldn't he? Top five, wouldn't he? Have to be. You would think. Top 10 test bowlers in the world. Pat Carmen's number one. James Anderson, number two at his age is still ridiculous. Is he 40? Yeah. That's absurd. Mitchell Stark, nine. Nine. Nathan Lyon, 12. So we don't have as many in the mm. hot boy stakes. That's Where's okay. the country boy at? Scott Bowling. Is the country boy missed too much cricket? Maybe. But surely not. <sighs> I can't see the country boy anyway. I'll be fucking Debo time. Oh, there he is, 15. If Test Cricket just goes. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle surely it. Surely that's got to be like... Oh, well, that would fuck our sum up completely. It can go, but it can't go for at least 50 years. Well, so yeah, for us. Yeah. Much like the planet. You know what I mean? Like, let's just keep the planet running for another 50 years and then... 60 years, yeah. Well, yeah, 50... I'll be, I'll be happy with 50. 50 years. The problem is though that science is developing ways to keep us, uh, keep us alive for longer. Depends what sort of, a, like, snick I'm in. Yeah, you don't want to be kept alive forever at a 90-year-old. No, fuck no. 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 Alex Carey. Yes. That beautiful, tanned motherfucker. Yeah. Now, he, that hundred, is he, is he, did I hear that he's like the fucking sixth Australian wicketkeeper ever to score a ton? No, I don't know about that. He's the second, he's only the second ever to get a Boxing Day ton as a wicketkeeper. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other one was, uh, I think, the Marsh, who recently passed. It was. Then, here's a stat for you that'll put some hair on your dick. His ton... Is the first by a wicket keeper. Mm-hmm. Well, that's sorry. This isn't even. This isn't the Harry Dick stat, but <laughs> okay. first by a wicket keeper since Brad Haddon for Australia in 2013. Really? We haven't had a wicket keeper get 100. Are you serious? Yeah, isn't that ridiculous? Wow. Yeah, here's one that I read. I that's on, fucking interesting. I think I might have even seen it on the NRL roast. Carey's ton is yep. the 15th in Test history by. He's the. He becomes the 15th wicket keeper. Yep. To score 100 for his country, right? Yep. If you combine all 15 
Other than other than Adam Gilchrist, you combine the rep. Let me just get it. So up. he's the f- if, of all in Test cricket history for Australia. For Australia. Oh, for Australia. Yeah, Fifteen yeah. capers have scored a ton. Let me get it up here. Why did I think it was six? So it's fifteen. Let me get it here. Let me get it here. We don't have Dior today, punters and dribblers. I'm not sure if it would have made a difference or not, but we are doing the Dioring ourselves here, which can be quite nostalgic, Tom. Yeah, it can be all right. Now, where the fuck did I see this? But also, you get moments of this. Yeah, here it is. This is a reminder of Adam Gilchrist's greatness. Mm -hmm. He has 17 test centuries. Yep. Alex Carey's ton today or yesterday was the 15th by all other Australian test wicket keepers combined. Wow. So that was tweeted out by Daniel Churney. Wow. Adam so, Kilchrist has 17 and Adam, Alex Carey's was the 15th of all others combined. Yeah. Jesus Christ. What a thoroughbred Gilchrist was. And remains, quite frankly. Remains, was, remains, remains. That is fucking astounding. Yeah. That side was just... No wonder Ponting took so many fucking catches. So many catches. So elite. Yeah. That'll be the greatest side probably ever assembled in the history of the game. I wouldn't disagree with that. Oh. Oh! Another run out? Trav! Trav! Loves it too. Dude, of course he does because he loves his nation. There is nothing more sacrilegious than getting fucking run out in a test match. It's a cardinal sin. Can you turn it up? We don't want to hear Mark Horse shit on everyone. Is this it? No. Whatever. Let's just see it. Oh, that's oh, clever. Rolled it. That's really clever from Trav. That's really clever. His baggy grain's getting into some work as yeah. well, which I like to and see. And I love, I think I just heard Mark will say he's not renowned for his fielding. So just again, backhanded compliment. Is not, that what he said? Not renowned for his fielding. Okay. Well, he just ran someone out in a test for his country. So yeah, and it was pretty impressive. And it was pretty impressive, but not renowned. No. So I'm, in, instead of like talking up what was a pretty cool moment, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. peg it back a little. No, 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 he's not renowned for his fielding, so I'm actually shocked he was able to do something good there in the field. Yeah, it's that's genius. That's genius. Is does Bavuma put the head down here? Did he put the head down? He didn't put the head down. I don't. I didn't see. I didn't see a bloke there that with his head down. Tom. No. Didn't want it enough. I think... Um, Alessandro, rather. My apologies to oh, the for firm. one. For one. Zondo doesn't want it. I'm sorry. He's just... There's not enough belief there. He was. He also was... He should have been backing up there. You should be risking getting man-catted, bruh. What are you doing? The Verma not happy. No. And rightly so. They are now... Is that five? They haven't scored two over 200. They haven't cracked 200 in the last, like, six or seven tests, I think. Tom, I'm pretty sure, and don't fucking ship down my throat if I'm wrong. Josh Masood. Don't Josh Masood me. <laughs> but... <laughs> Four for 65. I think that South Africa came into this test series as the number two test nation in the world. Yeah, we were looking at that, weren't we? They're now fourth, but I think that was revised. on uh, The revision I saw was Christmas Day revision, so that would have been after the first test. Okay. They're but if, they're number, if they were number two in the world, that is fucking shocking. Yeah, I don't know how that's possible. Two, the second or third, but I mean, they're definitely not second. But that's again what they were saying was that like South Africa don't have a second, like don't have a Sheffield Shield, I don't think. Equivalent. Equivalent. Yeah. yeah. And they've just started, they've just agreed to, I think from next year, have running through this period of the year in South Africa like a T20 comp. So they're like, they're not even, they're putting all their eggs in the T20 basket. They're having a T20 comp at this time of the year. Yeah. 
I mean, that, we do the exact same thing. But I know, but as a great cricket boys were pointing out, they were like, the fact that it's on a Big Bash League is on at this time of year is fucking ridiculous. Because none of the big dogs play. Yeah, I know. Big dogs don't play. Imagine if the big dogs were playing. You'd, you'd, well, they are playing this year. Yeah, at the end, playing much. but not really. Oh, Speaking of big dogs playing, Baggy Green, 3 mil. 3.15. 3.15 mil in the ten, IPL. 10 times his asking price. He only wanted, he, he, he said, I'll do it for 300. Yeah. Do you know what he said he was going to buy? An iPad. <laughs> I Mate. I know. There's a bit of me in Baggy Green. There's a, there's a shitload of you in Baggy there's Green. There's a bit of me in Baggy Green. I'm going to buy an iPad. Maybe, a, what about a house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or a jet ski. Or a jet ski. If you ski. want to go something a little more conservative, but a bit with a bit of pomp and pageantry. Well, there's it. a lot of, yeah, take that down to Botany. Take that down to La Perouse. Well, he's a West work. Australian boy. Taste fucking, go and hunt some bloody great whites out you there. You could, but any jet ski worth his salt knows that the, the fucking. The Botany. The pinnacle yeah, of, of the jet, jet ski world. <laughs> yeah, it's La Perouse. Oh, always right. has been and always will. Shout out to La Yeah. Um, and to the jet skis of this nation. I, I, listen, a couple of things. I wouldn't have begrudged Baggy Green from, from going a little bit more decadent with his spending, you know. I'd encourage it almost. But no, I'd encourage But I'm also buoyed by the level of maturity shown. Oh, uh, look, well, maturity and childishness wrapped up in the same in comment. This, in the same comment. So he, he, it's mature that he's he prudent. Want to go he's and, prudent with his spending. Yeah, he doesn't want to go and, you know, blow his load on a, on a jet ski. Mm. But he's also immature and childish enough to be like, I want an iPad. Yeah. Like, I you want... couldn't afford one already. You fucking yeah. playing for Australia. Pretty sure you've got an Australian contract. Yeah. Which pay huge bitches. Yeah, you'd be on like, what are you on? Five, six hundred grand? I I'd be pissing in the Jeez, wind. Dave, I would say or Dave's missing out on some work today. I Dave would think Green. that, but who's he, he with between that and West Australia? He's probably on six hundred, six seven hundred, six hundred, seven hundred. There's only eleven players though. Like no, there's twenty or something. Yeah, I mean, there's what there's what twenty contracted players. Yeah, it's not that many. No, but he's one of them. So. But I'm saying it's not that many, so maybe the money's higher. Yes. I don't want to know what he's getting. All around a Cam Green makes Indian Premier League. That's the problem. It's a bad time to be researching. Yeah, it is a bad it's time. It's all just fucking... It's a shocking time. Okay, well, let's just go here. September 25. Cam Green net worth 2022 salary endorsement cars house. Let's see. It's, fuck me. He's born in 1999. That's outrageous. It makes me physically ill. He became the youngest player to claim five wicket haul in Sheffield Shield cricket at the age of seventeen. Sure, but get get to the fucking yeah, get I to know. the nitty gritty. Net worth, they're saying he's already worth five oh, USD. But that's that's they're, they're pissing in the wind saying that. How the fuck would they know? Just give us his they're salary. Saying he earns a hundred thousand for every T Twenty international. Sorry, ten thousand for every T Twenty international. He doesn't play many of those. Currently doesn't hold a Cricket Australia contract. Bullshit. That can't be right. There's no way that's right. What year was that? It's the same 2022. This is fun He's for the punter. The apparently two luxury cars, a BMW and an Audi. Love it. Cameron Green House. No okay. Houses. So the Australian contracted players as of 7th of April 2022, Cameron Green on the list. Okay, well, Complete horseshit. Dumb fucking article. There are one. Two, 19, I think, contracted players for the men. You'd be able to basically pick all of them. Mitchell Swepson. And Adam Zampa, the only players that never played Test cricket. Aaron Finch, as well. Swepson's played Test cricket, but he doesn't. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Zampa, no. Agar. Well, you know what came up the other day? Agar's fucking ninety-nine, was it? Ninety-eight. Ninety-eight in England. In England, as batting with Phil Hughes yeah, on debut. Yeah, and the highest. Uh, I think it was the highest score made by number eleven. Test cricket. Now, is it by a number 11 or a number 11 on debut? Because fucking Gillespie got 200. That's true. Must have been on debut. Maybe he wasn't bad. Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? 
Who the fuck knows? Either way, Cam Green can afford an iPad, and that's what we're really talking about here. But how about him? How would he be going to bed that night going, I've just fucking... On Boxing Day night, I've just take I've just been given three point one five million. Is that USD? Probably. Oh no, I think it's Australian. Australian. And then I've just taken five fucking wickets. I've taken a bag at the MCG on Boxing Day. Then I break my finger and then come out and bat again because I'm built that way. Yeah. And then I get fifty. Yeah, because I'm built different. I'm built different. Yeah, and I love it. And I'm tall as a fucking redwood. Yeah. Which is worth repeating. Kids tall. Kids tall. He's, listen, I don't want to go early on this kid because this kid could be anything, but. This kid could be anything. This kid could be anything. And I'm thinking about, you know, one player in particular who may be South African. Yeah. I don't want to say it out loud. No, no, let's not, let's not speak it. I'm not going like, to speak it, but like, that's what I'm dreaming of. It could be anything. And we're just talking in reference to a former South African cricketer <laughs> whose name we won't mention. We won't mention it, but, but he could bat and bowl. He could bat and bowl. Uh, he put up like Ricky Ponting numbers yeah. and Brett Lee numbers. Yeah, yeah. So like either if you just took his bowling or his batting, he'd still be basically like one of the all time greats. So we're not refer we're not saying on the name, but we're, I'm not going to mention it, Tom. No, and neither are you. However, it would be nice if in the fucking the forms redwood baggy green forms of time, he carves out his own chapter mm. in the book of all time greats. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. No, that's all you saying. It's always high, punters and dribbles. Now we sit here and we wait for the eventual, just basically, just, you know, just the wrap up of this test. We just hump them into the ground. They're four seventy four. They haven't got over two hundred, as I said. Like they're just fucking horse shit. They trail. They trail the first innings lead by three hundred and twelve runs, four wickets down in their second innings. I oh, mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Pathetic. Pat Cummins chose to bowl. Great decision. Which was what you and I were saying. Inspired by us. You and I were extremely supportive of the decision on We were one. bullish. We were bullish on it. And I just I just thought to myself, listen, Skip knows. Mm. I trust Skip, you trust Skip, the nation trusts Skip. Skip knows what's best, and as it turned out he did. Yeah. Humped him for fuck all. Yep. Got in there, set him an unreachable target, and the series is now ours, Tom. It's just a matter of time. It's formality. Great reverse sweep there. Now, uh, look, I'm happy to put a little bit of a bow on cricket there. I don't know if we've missed anything. I don't think we've missed no, anything. No, I don't think so. There's a lot of injuries and shit, and who are we going to pick for Sydney? I'm like, whatever. Just fucking pick one of the next. <laughs> who's next up? Pick you know? blokes that'll do a job. Yeah, next up. It's pretty up. simple. Obviously, the country boys should come back in. Other than that, it's a next up mentality. But... Although they are saying that he's a like for like for bowling, so it's kind of like not the same thing as putting him in for Stark if Stark doesn't play, whatever. Cricket. That's cricket. Thanks to Kayo. Thank you, Kayo. Love you. Um, plenty of dribblers in our ear reminding us, well, not reminding us, pointing out the fact that Manly listened to what we said and are sending Tommy Turbo over to get that hamstring looked at yeah. in the US. Well, it'll look, it's not going to shock any of the punter and the dribbler that Tom and I have. Tremendous influence at the club. We weren't happy with what was being sort of mused in terms of his recovery mm. and in terms of his preparation for round one 2023. We said, listen, the best needs the best. It's as simple as that. If the best so happens to be in the States, then so be it. Let's get him over there on a private jet. All expenses fucking paid. A nice little luxury getaway for our boy. Just to get him right, mentally and physically. Some of the dribblers, Eddie, have asked the question. Mm. They said, it seems a little bit convenient that you were over in America mere weeks ago. Yeah. And now Tommy heading over there for hamstring treatment. Yes. And they're, they're wondering whether you, when you were over there, under the guise of honeymoon, mm. you're actually just dropping off a hammy. Look, I'll allow the punter and the dribbler room to speculate. Mm. Like I'll allow them that that uh that right. That right. That's exactly right. However, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna delve into it any further. Yeah. I mean, last time No comment essentially. No comment essentially. 
when I gave the hamstring initially, it, it was there was a lot of media speculation, a lot of lot of chatter about it, and I just think that if it were to happen again, Tom, it would be best just Keep left unsaid. Wraps, yeah. Because again, like you, we, you know, you weren't as well known at the time. No, I wasn't. So it was like, who is this? Who is this handsome, unknown guy yeah. with great head of hair? Yeah, who's this? Who's this absolute stud? Who's this fucking stud? Yeah. donating hamstrings mm. to the greatest footballer of all time. Like, yeah. who? What the, what's going on yeah. now? If you were to do it now, it would be a bit more of a. It's a bit more high profile, Tom. Yeah. And look, I don't want to put my family through it. No, exactly. I don't want to put Tommy through it. Your young family, my <laughs> Tonka especially. Yeah, so yeah. No, you know, I'm just. I think better left unsaid. If it were to happen, if it did happen. Didn't, but maybe it didn't. But maybe it didn't. Essentially no comment. What I do know is that Tommy will be cherry ripe for round one. Kid's good. Kid's good to go. Tommy will be cherry ripe for round one. Don't fucking worry about that, bro. No. Don't get that twisted. Now, I don't... It'll be upon us. Like, you'll fucking go to bed tonight and wake up and it'll be fucking round one. NRL season. It'll be back. It's, it'll, it comes quick. Mate, we're one test away from the test summer being over. 100%. On That's too quick. I know. It's fucked, Tom. It's too quick. It's fucked. Do you know there's two tests after the New Year's test next year? Where? In Australia. Like, we're out, they've like they're, it's completely fucking... It's all oh, over the shop. Hold on. What do you mean? What's happening? So next year. Yeah. So 2024. Oh, next year. So 2024, next summer, next Australian summer. Apparently there's two tests after the New Year's Day. Is that because Ashes is mid-year and they're given more time? I don't off know. Start I don't, I don't there's know. There's fucking shit. Apparently, apparently, apparently you basically, the, the fucking lay of the land now is you do what India tells you. India, so Stop India, so India, us, bro. India, draw up the schedule and go. Here it is. Enjoy. I don't know what that means. I don't know. I don't have any more information. Um, for those that keep going, when's your DMP coming back? It'll come back around rugby league time. Yeah, DMP will be back around rugby league time. That's all you need to know. I, I don't think it. I don't know why that needed saying, no. but. For those, well, for those, for those think that it's gone forever. Dude, is it gone? Is it gone forever? No, no it's not. Dude, we'll be relax. back next year. We're having a breather. Having a breather, wooing up some, like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Um, I don't know how much to talk about this, but Sam Burgess's driving record seems to be one of the most, like. Can you clear this up for me, he's Tom? Been suspended. No, so, I read. That he got pulled over, charged, pissed well, pissed hot, cocaño, taken to the fucking uh, cop, shop. cop shop, written up, as it were. He then left and went and got on his own independent test that, conf- that results came back. It was a blood test, I think, off the top of the dome. Said that there was no traces of any uh, substances. illicit substances found in his bloodstream. And that he doesn't do that anymore, hasn't done it for ages, and he's living a clean life. Well, good for him if he's... Do- dude, you know what, dude? I didn't know that he went and got an independent test. If he did, that to me does speak to uh, innocence, but... Can you use, an, in- can you use, an, in- can you use yeah. an independent test in court? And who's the independent doctor and all that shit? But, you know, whatever. From that side of things... From the the Red Bull side of things, where he's like, you know, is he doing bags? Is he not? Whatever. The man has been. I think he was on a suspended license though. <laughs> he has been on a suspended license or had no license at all. I think for the entire time he's been in Australia. Where did he get pulled over? He's been pulled over like a million fucking times. But where did he get pulled over this time? Oh, I don't know. Dave would have fucked Like, is he really getting pulled over in the same spot over and over again? Like, is he just driving into RBTs? At a, like, it's I like, don't know. He's having, no, he's having some shit luck. Like, you I know what been, I mean? I haven't been pulled over for fucking ages. Touch wood, but I haven't Touch been wood. pulled over. Oh, I don't think I've been pulled over for 10 years. I've think. definitely been in 10 years I've been pulled over, but still, like... The man, but to, to have a suspended 
license and to be still driving is cheeky as it gets. Well, it's cheeky. With the amount of times he's been caught driving on a suspended license. I wonder as well if they run his plates and they go, this guy's got a suspended license. Yeah, I wouldn't be driving my own car. (laughs) No. No. But then again, you're also Sam Burgess, so people know you. So it's like, oh, there's Sam Burgess driving. Let's see. Yeah, but you can get cars with tinted windows. No, yeah, I know that, but I don't think he's doing that clearly. Well, not clearly. It wouldn't shock me if he wasn't doing that. Unfortunately for Sam, he struggles to get out of his own way. He seems like he's right in front of himself a lot <laughs> all the time. the time, all the time, all and the he's time. and he's not. He's a big boy. Yeah, he's hard. It's hard to get out of the way of that guy. So if you're if he's getting in your way, and by him I mean you, mm. and you're that big and muscular and dense and wide, mm. that's gonna it's gonna make life tricky. Yeah, you need to be right out of the way of yourself right out of the way not even in the fucking picture no 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 or peripherals out of the peripherals Tom you don't want to be in the peripherals get behind yourself not in front of yourself get behind yeah give yourself a push yeah give yourself a push instead of slowing yourself down that's what I'd say to Sam don't stand in front of yourself get behind yourself and push yourself push yourself give yourself a leg up tap on the bum (laughs) not a a sack whack no you want to give yourself an ass slap yeah not a sack whack yeah Always said it. Always um, said it. Poor old Sam. Poor old Sam. Good luck to him, though. Good luck to him. All the best to Sam. We, I don't... And I, I don't, mean that, too. I, no, no, I have no... All the best to Sam. Sam. All the best to Sam. Is there anything else in rugby league? I feel like there is something, but I'm forgetting it. Maybe not. I don't know. Any more scall- scallywaggery, skullduggery? I don't think so, necessarily. But it's hard to tell sometimes. Shout out to the Baggy Green Long Lunch. That was fucking fantastic. Shout out to all the boys that came. Yeah. Made it a very memorable day slash evening. Um, a lot of laughs were had. Yeah. A lot of joy was enjoyed. Um, a lot of giggle, a lot of yarn. A lot of giggle, a lot of yarn. Just a good, fun, festive time. Longest day of the Tigers year. Tigers with John Bateman. Yes. Dude, yes. Tigers are fucking... Tigers? That's a huge scalp for the Tigers. Tigers, dude. Huge scalp. Tigers. I wonder how much of that is 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 the great Benji Marshall. Or Timmy Sheens. I know that Timmy's there at the moment, but I'm like, is this, is this, is this Benji just getting into his work? I don't think so. You think this is Tim? I think this is more of a Sheensy move. Or is this more of a... Come down and we'll show you around the new fucking setup, the new fucking. Fifth. Well, I think they've just they've made some good signings, but like they've made some good fucking signings. So it's like, well, okay. It's but what like, I'm trying to trying to what I'm trying to work is what's changed, because something's changed. Right. Papali'i, Coruscant. Well, in fairness, Papali'i and Coruscant were signed by Madge. So, the, so that's so maybe then it's got nothing to do with fucking. Well, what it might is it the center of excellence that they've built? Listen. You have Coruscant and you have Papali'i. That's a good way to take to sell. You know your Batemans of the world. Yeah. They brought in David Clemmer. They fucked off Jackson Hastings to keep Luke Brooks. Who knows if that'll be a good if that'll work long term? I'd love nothing more than Luke Brooks to win a comp with the Tigers. Not nothing more. <laughs> nothing more is pretty. Huge. That's huge. That's. Huge. I take that back. <laughs> but I would love for like it would be. It'd almost be funny if Luke Brooks won a comp with the Tigers. Could you two just not talk anymore?